Hey there. One of the great features in the network security platform is the ability to write a custom signature or a UDS, a user defined signature. So today I'm going to show you how to set that up in your own network security platform. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start a Wireshark. And the use case here is we've got a network security admin that would that has identified a program that he does not want his users or is against corporate policy, something of that nature. He sees them using it and he'd like to create a signature to block that. The name of this application is called Password Cracker. Now that may or may not be a bad thing. In fact, if you scan it with um, software to detect uh, malware, it'll come out clean. But still, it's against corporate policy and we'd like it blocked. So what I'm going to do is I, I've started a capture and I'm going to go out to this website and um, get a trace. And from that trace, I'm going to go ahead and find the get command and then follow that TCP string so that I can dig a little deeper and see which quality or which unique um, attribute I'd like to create this signature off of. And so as I go through here and I find the get command, I'm going to follow that TCP string. And as I look through here, there is some information that uh, we can see. But one of them here is the, is the URL for the application called Password Cracker. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a signature based off of this URL. So I recognize that Password Cracker can probably be downloaded in multiple locations. But for this example, I just wanted to show you that we can take a URL, create a signature out of that. So now we'll close out of this and get back into our network security platform. And to create a custom signature, it'll be under your policy, advanced, and then your custom attack editor. Currently that's a Java um, application. And um, Java will start up, you'll go through your regular prompts and uh, click through. And once that's open, then you can go um, this window is open. You'll see that there's a little um, wait icon or um, indicator at the bottom right hand corner. So we're just going to go ahead and as soon as that pops up, we will go to I'm sorry, attack and then new and then MACFI attack definition. And this is going to be an exploit attack. On this page, you can see that there's a couple different options to choose from. And the first one is detect the URL. So we're just going to go ahead and select that one. There are others that you can detect, the email attachments or a DNS query. Uh, so there's different options to choose from, but this one uh, is one, the URL is what we're going to use. And as this uh, window pops up, we'll give it a name, and I'm just going to name it the name of the application, Password Cracker, and then a description. So in my case, I'm going to say that it's against corporate policy. So that as uh, these come up, we can see that we we don't want to allow them, not because they're necessarily malicious, but because uh, they don't conform to what we approve. Now, choosing a protecting category, you can see that there's a lot to choose from here. You could even select something. If you identify a zero day and would like to create a signature for it, you can do that through just label it malware, malware or um, any number of things. But here we're just going to go client protection, and we will find the policy violation. And then we'll go, and in our case, it's going to be a server to client. So anything we're going to download from the outside, and then the URL that we got from our uh, packet trace. And you can see here in this window that it's already up here. It's pending. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to File, then Save. And we're going to change that pending um, label and give it an actual ID number. So as soon as it's as soon as we hit save, you're going to see that uh, waiting indicator at the bottom right hand corner and it's going to go through updating all of the policies that you've got up there with this new signature. And you'll notice that uh, if we come over here to policy and then intrusion prevention and IPS policies, we're going to go into a policy that we've deployed. In fact, the one that I have the most assignments to is just the default inline IPS policy. And we'll go ahead and double click that and make sure that it's in here. So uh, since it's password cracker, 
type in cracker here and then apply that filter and it should pop up uh, right away. And here we have our, our UDS or user defined signature and we'll go in here and we'll, we'll actually customize the way that we'd like this to behave and under blocking I'm going to change that from uh, disable blocking to enable blocking. And so to do that I have to enable this uh, blocking option here and then from the down or the menu select enable blocking and okay. Once you do that you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner of the signature window that the save changes from uh, gray to red meaning that you've made a change and in order for it to take you have to save. So to save this we'll just click uh, it'll give you a summary of your changes and finish. So now that your signatures have been updated to behave the way you want to, or at least alert or block the way you'd like them to, you still have to deploy the changes to the sensor themselves. So we're going to go out there, and you can do that either through devices, global deploy pending changes, or in the upper right hand corner, you'll see that down arrow with the two there, meaning that there's two changes that uh, have to be applied to. And in our case, those two changes are the two sensors that I've got in my lab. And if you select deploy, it's going to push those out. That could, could take some time depending on how big your signature sets are, how many custom signatures you have, and how many different appliances you've got. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go and try and download that same file again. But in the meantime, I'll start my thread analyzer so that we should see the alert come up as, as we try to download that file again. And I'll remote desktop to one of the clients behind my IPS sensor and try and do that. So as the threat analyzer is opening up, I'll go ahead and move over here to my remote desktop connection. And I'm just going to go the same way I did before. I'm going to Google CNET password cracker and hopefully it'll take me to that same link. And if everything's been done correctly, the page should get blocked and we should be alerted in our threat analyzer with a block alert. So there you have it, setting up a custom signature in McAfee Network Security Platform.